Okay, we just watched the trailer for the finale, and now we're going to cover all of the Vanderpump news stories from this week, but there is a lot this week, so let's see what we get get through. Um, also, I want to remind people, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, it does look like I've come off the face of the sun, but it's just because I'm in my parents' little guest room, and uh, there's a light shining directly on my face that's not a professional light, so it does look like I'm potentially um, getting skin cancer at this moment. Also, uh, I'm trying to use a little bit more of a lower voice right now because it's 12.22 a.m., and both of my parents uh, are trying, you know, they're in a tiny... A uh, tiny house, so my voice carries. Uh, you you know because I scream. Um, but wow, what a trailer! Which, by the way, isn't this funny? At the, I mean, it really is some dude. <laughs> they always make fun of some geek in a basement, like you know, on Reddit talking about strangers, and that's basically what I'm doing here in podcasting form. Amazing. Okay, so we saw that trailer. We're at a really high anger level, right? So what what do we go to first? Because there is a lot of stuff. Let me see if I can find something funny to start with or something that potentially could make us smile. And let's talk, you know, okay, my favorite TMZ guy, Josh, we talked about this briefly last week, but Josh, he's the guy that's like, okay, okay, uh, Tom, okay, okay. Like he catches Tom on the street or at the airport, like, Tom, okay, okay, um, uh, I hate having to ask you this, Tom, but like, have you seen Ra Raquel's nipples? You know, he'll always ask kind of weird questions, but he's he, he seems like innately a good person. So you kind of, I really have grown to enjoy his interview style. I'm not even joking, but, Tom Sandoval loves his interview style as well. So lately, Tom has been showing us on Instagram all of the um, fun summer camp activities he's doing over the last couple of weeks, trying to find himself into checking him instead of checking himself into actually some really deep therapy. He is, um, you know, hiking, rappelling, shooting bows and arrows. I mean, listen, is he does, is he trying to become a survivalist? Does he know something we don't like? But he's also making Fruit Loop necklaces with his friend Kyle Chan, and he's always like and. By the way, I never thought I would miss the mustache, but I really wanted to grow it back. I, it's starting to look a little bit like Matthew McConaughey in Dallas Buyers Club, like he's losing way too much weight. And um, I would say I'm worried about him, but he's brought this on himself. And I, I really don't think he he's put himself in a really bad position in so many ways. That's an obvious statement, but I still don't think he's regretful of what he did to Ariana. I think he is regretful that he's starting to realize what he did is turning away a lot of fans. I really thought, I really still don't know if he fully understands this, but now like every weekend he's showing all these fruit loop necklaces he's made, or he's showing himself like how buff he is with Billy Lee, you know, they have paparazzi camped outside of their house. So he's making these necklaces uh, with Kyle Chan all the time. And he decided to do a solid and make one for his good buddy, Josh, the TMZ back grid reporter. And I just thought that was amazing. Here's a little audio of Tom Sandoval. And by the way, isn't this like illegal in journalism? I know it's TMZ, but you shouldn't be accepting gifts, Josh. We know this, right? Here's audio of Josh getting this Fruit Loop necklace from Tom Sandoval. It's like a, no, sorry, ne not necklace, like a bracelet. Here we go. So Sandoval, we see him walking, Kyle Chan's behind him, pulls up on, uh, on Josh, and Josh is filming. I got you something. I got you something. It says Josh. He puts the he puts the break. Like, does this mean they're going to prom? Yeah, we got it. We got it. He, okay. Okay. It, it, that wasn't really great audio, you guys. But basically, Tom is putting the bracelet that says Josh that he made at Kyle Chan's onto Josh's wrist. I'm like, man. Once again, like this, you're being kind to the wrong people. Josh seems like a really good guy, but also like, what is this? Does this mean they're going steady now? Like, Josh, will you wear your friendship bracelet all the time and never take it off? Like, I, I really wish he'd done one of those like heart necklaces of like, Josh, I want you to have one half of this heart and I'm going to wear the other half of this part heart. Like, by the way, anything's better than those lightning necklaces, but <laughs> So I love he's like, Josh, you've asked so many great questions over the last couple of weeks. 
I was trying to think of the people that I talk to most now. There's Jason Bader, the drummer, Howie Mandel. I made him a friendship bracelet. Um, Kyle Chan provides all the friendship bracelets. Um, then we have uh, Billy Lee, yes, Schwartz, friendship bracelet. Um, let's see, who else still talks to me? Um, but I like that he included the TMZ guy. Like when you are including the TMZ guy into like your 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 friend circle, you know, your top eight on MySpace, then there, there's more serious issues than we could possibly imagine. But it's this one, I mean, it, it's, it's the recording of this and putting it out. You know what would kind of been interesting and what I would have suggested for him if I were to give him advice is that, dude, you can do these things, just don't record it. And then if Josh decides to talk about it somewhere down the line, maybe a year later, people will be like, Oh, weird. So Tom was like doing good things for people or trying to encourage people or do nice things without any kind of eyes on it at all. I think, I know that sounds crazy, but we might have a little bit of a different perception of it. Okay. Let's talk to some Vanderpump Rules news in terms of jobs, because you are going to be shocked because Tom Schwartz, not Tom Schwartz, this dude fails upwards more than anybody that I know. I mean, this guy one day should run for president because he'll probably get elected. This guy not only went directly to Winterhouse after this season of Vanderpump Rules wrapped, and then he had to go to the reunion, and then I think go back to finish Winterhouse, which Sandoval was supposed to join him, but it didn't happen. But now we've, and by the way, Winter, it's like, dude, bravo, get it together. Throw the ladies of Vanderpump Rules some of the gigs. But also now Tom Schwartz not only has that gig, but he now has a Fox reality competition show that's right tom schwartz is going to be on a fox reality competition show and you're going to crack up what the concept of this show is i was it, it almost seems like this is a show created entirely by artificial intelligence even the images of all of them in their astronaut suits looked like i was like this isn't real um it's called stars on mars just sit with that, folks. Stars on Mars. That's the title of this reality show. Natasha Legero, who I love, the comedian. Ariel Winter, who was one of the daughters on Modern Family. Lance Armstrong, which, by the way, Lance Armstrong, a famous cheater as well, not only on women, but he also cheated and lied about all the, the stuff he was doing to help win the Tour de France. Princes. Uh, Adam Rapon, Ronda Rousey, who is a, uh, a U UFC um, person. But you also have Tom Schwartz, Tanashi, the museum, Portia Williams, Portia making a very big return to reality television with this and Ultimate Girls Trip. Um, so Tom Schwartz is going to be there. Fox has set the 12 fearless celebrities who soon will be packing their bags and preparing for launch to the Red Planet, sort of, the network's latest unscripted competition series. Now, I want you to pay attention to the word unscripted, and that's what they call a lot of reality television, but they also call it unscripted, especially when the Writers Guild is on strike because they're saying, don't worry, we're still going to have TV on network TV, but it's unscripted, so we don't have to pay writers. So... Well, and in this picture, I don't know if you can see it on YouTube, but this picture, you can see Tom in the back and he has his fingers in his mouth. Somebody pointed that out to me and I was cracking up. But literally this show is going to be a competition show where they simulate a team of people going to Mars. Like, are we fully out of ideas where they're like, you know what we should do? And this would be crazy. Like, is this like, was it like Tom and Tom doing mushrooms to come up with the shorts and Sandy's, um, you know, <laughs> decoration? Is it the same people? <laughs> Did they do this to create this show? Because it seems completely ridiculous. I mean, by the way, wouldn't it be crazy if it was good, but Tom Schwartz finally got his own project away from Tom Sandoval. Now, William Shatner is going to serve as mission control, of course, Captain Kirk from Star Trek. The series will see the crew members live, eat, sleep, strategize, and bond with each other in the same space station. I wonder if Sandoval will, uh, sorry, I wonder if Schwartz will find a way to get married and cheat on that space station. <laughs> oh, I was drunk, man. I don't know. Oh, um, during their stay, they will be faced with authentic conditions that simulate life on Mars. I wonder if they'll bump into Elon Musk. And they must use their brains and brawn. Uh-oh, Tom's going to, that's going to be hard. Or maybe just their stellar social skills. Okay, to outlast the competition and claim the title of brightest star in the galaxy. The celebrities will compete in missions and will vote to eliminate one of their crewmates each week, sending them back to... <laughs> But 
first off, didn't we want to send Sandoval to another planet? But also, <laughs> this seems like something that Tom Schwartz is going to be potentially embarrassed to be. If Tom wins, they actually shoot his ass to Mars. Um, this seems just insane, you guys. This truly seems like I feel like I'm on acid. This is going to start Monday, June 5th on Fox. So set your calendars on that. That is wow. I mean, guys, I'm, I'm not, I, that, the, I, I couldn't even make a joke that good. That is, and by the way, do, I'll, I'll watch it or I'll, you know what? I don't know if I'll, I'll watch clips. You know, I'll watch clips, but that's not all, folks. Scandaball has not only gotten Schwartz on another reality show, but guess who else is on another reality show? That's right. Say it with me, Kristen Doty. She was back on Watch What Happens Live. We saw her in the season finale trailer, but we also have her on a new reality show called GOAT. And GOAT, of course, stands for GOAT. No, GOAT stands for Greatest of All Time. And this is another reality show. This is going to be now on Amazon Freebie, Amazon Freebie, which actually is where Jury Duty, that amazing show that I fell in love with a couple of weeks ago, that uh, they were on, a couple of the actors were on my show a couple of weeks ago. So good. If you haven't watched it, please watch. This is going to be amazing. Um, so uh, this is interesting. You're gonna you're gonna love the cast here. The cast is insane. It is Jill Zarin. Jill Zarin finally got some work here. Uh, you have Tasha Adams from The Bachelor. You have uh, uh, one of the, oh, you have one of the, oh, you have Reza. Reza's in this. But this is another competition reality show where they compete on who is the greatest of all time. And Dodie is really having a moment. Dodie is having a huge moment. So it's interesting after being fired from that show or let go or whatever we're calling it, it was a long bleak, I'm sure three years from her. Cause remember her book had just come out. They had sold her book and to make it into a movie and that all, all that shit went away. Like this, all that stuff with faith broke at right at that time. And then we went into the pandemic. So it all kind of came crashing down around her. And now she is like kind of coming back. And I think a huge push of this of course is scandal. Now the interesting thing about this, which, the reality show seems like whatever. I'm excited to see Dodie back on the screen, but her, her on watch what happens live Wednesday night, get this. I want to read you the ratings for this. The ratings for this were 0. 0.41 demo, 997,000 viewers. And that's a season high for watch what happens live. So that is the highest rated watch what happens live not just a Vanderpump Rules cast members of this season of Watch What Happens Live. People were genuinely interested to have her back, see what she was going to say. And she said some, I mean, she said exactly what I thought she would say. Um, I really liked seeing her. I'm very curious. By the way, have you, if I watch Watch What Happens Live every night, Andy is on his phone too much in between commercials. They always will come back and he's on his phone and I'll be like, okay. And it's like, dude, it's 30 minutes. Put that phone down, man. Don't kill me for saying that, Andy, please. I love you. Um, so that was the ratings for Kristen Doty on that show. And that's got to make her feel great, I would imagine, because my fear that, you know, I would fear that I'd go on that show and nobody would tune in. Um, but not just that. The Vanderpump Rules show itself earned its highest live ratings since 2019 with Wednesday's episode um, uh, this keeps, I mean, this just keeps popping off. They got 1,412,000 viewers. That's live viewing. That's not even taking into account three day and seven day ratings. That's how they break those ratings down. So by seven day ratings, I'm guessing they're going to get into like the 3.2 million category, which is insane for a reality television show at this moment in their 10th season. So NBC Universal is thrilled with this. Um, we'll go into a couple of Kristen Doty clips from Watch Out Happens Live in a second, but I wanted to share that for all you geeks like me that really are fascinated, kind of seeing how the series ratings have just kept climbing and climbing. And, you know, the last two seasons, they've been decreasing and decreasing. So this is wild 
very wild to see, and it's very not the usual. And that's really directly related to Scandaval. Scandaval is the only person that is not able to make money off of Scandaval. In fact, whether you think this is sad or not, he started his uh, tour in uh, Westbury, New York tonight. Now, I believe I'm going to have somebody from that show that was there on the podcast, probably on Monday for like a little brief review. But our friend Tracy Morrissey, who you know, a podcaster and a writer, a really amazing person, she was there and posted a really funny photo. And she also posted a video. And you know, it seemed full a little bit up front, but then she showed the seats and nobody was in the seats. Now they just started offering Tom Sandoval and the most extras two for one tickets. And that's never a good sign. Um, the person that messaged me said there was like 60 plus people there. I'm not sure what the capacity is. And I'm sure that person is, you know, low balling it. So let's call it like a hundred people, maybe, uh, maybe more, but I mean, and it, you know, and he had like, he had this suit with like light up lightning things. It's like, dude, maybe stop with the lightning. It's not, or it's not, it's very bad. It's bad mojo. Now you don't want to be like, you know, it's like, I love that he got a lighting rig. He's wearing costuming and it's like, just focus on the performance. I mean, this is really, I, I, I keep saying like, it's, I'm starting to feel not I'm starting to feel bad because I just think the best move for him would be to go away. And I don't mean forever, but he needs to go away because this is going to be a very painful, humbling experience for him unless his ego is just so large that he will not be humbled. Um, but I, I hope he genuinely learns this was not the right time to go out on tour with his band. Um, and the band, like I said, I've always said it, you know, they're talented musicians. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. It, it really, mm, I'm very conflicted, but I, I wanted to also play the audio. This is from a, an account by Wig, by Wig, Hello Drama. Um, and they always have great content on there. Um, but I wanted to play this video of Tom Sandoval doing a local news show. And this lady is interviewing him really quickly because they're talking about his concerts. And he's he's obviously at his house that he shares with Ariana because I can notice that wallpaper pattern. He looks really gaunt, emaciated, and he's talking to this lady about the tour. With all that's going on with, with Bravo and the show, I mean, people are talking about the scandal in, involving you, the cheating scandal. What do you make of some people who say, okay, it's great that he's doing this tour, he has this ban, and it's for a good cause, at least the DC show, but I'm a little hesitant about being involved in anything that Tom is connected to. Uh, what do you want to say to those people who are very critical uh, of you right now? Um, you know, that obviously I, you know, I just want people to come out, have a good time. Um, you know, um, I'm a human being who uh, makes mistakes and, um, you know, that I've learned and growing from those mistakes. And, uh, you know, that, I mean, if people want to come out and see a great band and have a, you know, have a party fun environment to come out and enjoy themselves, you know. Do you think it will be hard, though, Tom, moving forward, being judged? Because this is such a huge uh, scandal that's been rocking headlines for weeks now. Do, do I do I think? Yeah, do you um, think it I will impact know. the tour? <laughs> I, exactly. And that's what I'm trying to get to the heart of. Uh, moving forward, that's going to be a tall order for you. It's, it's top of mind for many. Yeah. Um, well, it's something that we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. As of right now, I mean, ticket sales for our tour have been really great. You know, people have been very supportive. Um, you know, obviously the people that, you know, are supporting, you know, supportive and are, you know, who, who are staying by my side, they're obviously a lot less vocal than the people who are not kind of uh, similar to like when you go, you know, on Yelp and look at like restaurants, people are have are uh, less likely to compliment a place than they are to leave a bad review. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. Got it. But you, you've said you've made your peace with it and you, you've moved forward and are moving forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what you have to do in life. All right, Tom. Well, thank you so much for your time. And wow. I feel like she might have a friendship bracelet coming to her. No, uh, she did a very good interview. Uh, you know, it, it's really weird circumstances, 
But I mean, you know, you really see that Tom does have a hard time expressing himself with words. And I always thought that's why Ariana would come in there and kind of help him certain times, especially at reunions. But then he's like, it's like a Yelp review. It's like people just don't. By the way, that's bullshit. I see Yelp reviews all the time of people leaving five stars. Maybe it's he's looking at the Schwartz and Sandy's Yelp reviews. Who knows? I get the sentiment there. But also, like, you know, they 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 talk about Tom Sandoval and the most extras being the ultimate party band, but that's the, 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 the hard part is that, do you really want to party with the ultimate party band when you don't have good feelings about the lead singer? I love that. He's like, Oh, if you want to come out and have a good time with a pretty great band, he's like, and I'm like, yeah, go see Taylor Swift and her band, man. It's, it's probably a little more expensive, but I mean, he's out there trying to promote this stuff and I'll be curious, are you going? I mean, I keep asking you guys that. And I, I mean, uh, listen, he's playing, I think the beacon, which is where he played for BravoCon in a couple of days in the city. And it's weird because like Tracy Morrissey went and she went, you know, not because she's a Tom Sandoval fan. She went because she's a fan of Vanderpump rules. And she's, a, you know, I, I think, you know, she did it for the gram a little bit, obviously you got that great picture, but she went all the way out there to do that. Now, I mean, I have a feeling you'll see a little bit of that with the Gramercy show. I mean, like, listen, my one of my favorite writers, Nomi Fry. Um, I have a feeling she'll pop there, pop up there. I mean, people want the picture. People want the joke. People want that. And it's sad, though, because when you're trying to win over people in like a music environment, you don't want people there just so they can get a funny Instagram photo and all of us go, ha, 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 ha. you know, it's a really hard place to win back anybody from. And that's why I kept thinking lay low, lay low, like Rocky Rachel Raquella. She uh, started this week with a statement um, on her Instagram account. Now, they, whoever's running her account posted this for Rachella, uh, for, uh, sorry, Raquel, and uh, they wanted to remind people that it is mental health. Um, oh, my God. I'm trying to find her on Instagram, and I realize I keep spelling Rachel. Oh, my God. Um, oh, no. She still follows me. <laughs> no, I don't like that. Um, oh wow, they took down. Did they took take this down? So let me see if I screenshotted it. Maybe it was in her stories, and I don't look at her stories. So, um, oh here it is. Oh yeah. It said, this was Tuesday, this account was hacked and with the help of Instagram, it has been reset and is now managed by Raquel's team for the next month while she continues treatment. May, and they capitalize May, is Mental Health Awareness Month. So Raquel has requested all of the posts focus on raising awareness for mental health organizations, advocates, and removing the stigma surrounding treatment. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I don't understand about Raquel's team. Um, also, uh, you know, I didn't also know Raquel was hacked because nothing weird was posted. In fact, if anything, things were just taken down from her account. Um, ugh, man. And I truly hope there is a team of people and I truly hope um, she is in a mental health facility. The problem is, though, once you start lying at the level that they lied, it leaves room for doubt. I mean, you know, uh, even uh, trying to be kind and trying to say, okay, mental health, all of that stuff. You're like, well, these people lied. You know, we saw Rachel in this last week's episode, which by the way, it was interesting that this came out on Tuesday and that, you know, the trailer got released two hours later where, you know, it, it showed Raquel smirking that like we talked about in the trailer. You know, I sometimes wonder if these things, like they know it's about to get leaked. So they're trying to like get a little bit of sympathy. I don't know. It's hard when you lie that much, you start to question, you know, the actual pain people are going through, which is dark. I hate to be that person, but I think we're all like that in a little bit, like fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me kind of thing. So we already go into it with, uh, you don't seem like that great of a person. Oh my God, you guys, it is just wild. Also, I want to remind you, I was on Jamie's, uh, Jamie Lynn's pod, Jamie all over talking to, uh, she's the co-host of shenanigans a lot of the times. And she was there for a lot of these things. And it was interesting talking to her because I don't know if all of this cut, got cut out, but she was talking about kind of feeling guilt because Sandoval, you know, she had heard through a friend said, I'm done with Jamie Lee, dude, this through, you know, like kind of lashing out at her and that kind of i i took that in and i was like man that is just so sad that he's still even deeming to lash out at other people at this moment when it's you know at some point just being a man i'm going like i brought this on myself i deserve the things that are coming to me right now 
maybe if I do actually learn from my mistakes, which he told that news reporter, you know, he doesn't seem to be truly learning when I hear things like that. Cause it's like, that's the least of your concern, what Jamie has to say about you. But I was talking to Jamie too, because she had mentioned, uh, and I'm talking about casting. So I want to talk to you guys about casting. They're doing interviews or they've been doing interviews for a couple of weeks now. And my prediction, because you want to think about it, like, who do we want to see on this? We want to see everybody come back, right? Even though, like I told you last week, I don't think Raquel should come back if she really is taking mental health awareness May seriously. But of course we want her back. I also poised the question, posed the question to, to Twitter and ins Instagram of like, could we do a season of 11 of Vanderpump Rules without Tom? Like, of course we could. It's doable. But would you want to? And I got to tell you, it's pretty down the line, 50% saying, yeah, you totally could do another season. In fact, I don't want to see him. I'd rather follow everybody else. And then 50% of like, are you crazy? Of course we need him. Da, 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 da. We, you know, but really, you know, in he desperately needs the season for money and for the trying to win back his credibility. But it really is going to be a season of him getting his ass handed to him for the most part. Like, honestly. Um, and I think he's fine with that if he can be promised to potentially get back in people's good graces. And I don't mean his fellow cast members and friends. I think the audience he's more interested in because that's going to affect all of his future endeavors from all of his, uh, you know, influencer stuff to his band, to everything that he wants to do. But okay. Those are the people, but Ariana said she won't film with Tom and Raquel. And a lot of people have said that now Sheena is it's interesting about Sheena because Sheena kind of went from, I will definitely never film with Raquel, Rachel again, but then, uh, or Tom, but then I'm trying to find this clip. I found her. She actually did an interview because she's promoting some product because everybody's getting uh, influencer deals right now, of course. Um, but she did this interview where it was just in the last couple of days where she said, of course, you know, I've thought about having to film with them again, but you know, it would have to be a group scene at Lisa's place. And you know, it won't be any of the birthdays. She says it won't be any of the birthdays. She says this in the interview. And I thought what a change even in those couple of weeks of, I won't film with them at all to, it probably will have to happen because that's the reality of that situation. The production will be trying to beg to get these people in the same room with each other. They just will because they know that's where the true drama lies. And Sheena is smart enough to realize eventually she's going to have to do that. She just, she just is. And I'm just curious who else is going to be around though? Who else will film with Sandoval and Raquel? And it's going to be interesting because a lot of people that I think said a couple of weeks ago that they would never be on this show is probably slowly changing their mind. They're probably really thinking about it and going, okay, could I, in what world could I come back? Um, and this is what I'm thinking about in terms of people being added to the cast. So you have... Jamie Lynn, Sheena's friend, I know they talked to her. Who knows? She said she wouldn't do it, but you never know. Then you have Dana Kaba, <laughs> Dana Cathan, Sandoval calls her Kaba. Dana, of course, is Katie's uh, friend. A lot of the, she, Dana was actually a part of the show in season eight. Um, so you have her and she, you know, Katie just went overseas with her. She's at all of the events. She was at Coachella with Ariana. So she would film with Ariana, Katie. You have a friend for Katie because I'm guessing Christina Kelly won't be on this season because she just gave birth. So Dana said, no, she wouldn't go back. But also I think that could change as well. So look potentially for that. So Jackson, Brittany, look for that in a friend of capacity. Also, Dodie got extremely high ratings. She is on that goat reality show, but. Doty could potentially come back, especially with those ratings. So it kind of leaves this open in so many ways. Now you actually have their real friend group. So with Ariana, you have a guy named Brad and you have Logan. Logan also is the manager of Tom Tom. And you've seen Logan a lot this season and just kind of background or a couple of lines here and there, but one of Ariana's best friends. And I I've been looking to get, and I've been looking, but I think we do deserve to see more gay men and women on this show. We do. I would actually like to see gay relationships on the show. It's the reality of this friend group situation. You also have Jesse Montana. You know, I would love to see 
real relationships of all kinds on this show. So you have that with Sandoval. You finally, will this be the season that Kyle Chan actually has multiple scenes instead of just giving away discounted jewelry to them? Um, you also have Billy Lee. Billy Lee says also doesn't want to come back on the show, but maybe now with Tom, I really need you, Billy. I gave you a friendship necklace and a fruit loop bracelet. Come on, Billy. And then secretly, I think all of these people desperately want to be on reality television anyway. So you've got that as well. Who else, though? I mean, I would actually like Brock to get bumped up a little bit more than he was this season. So are we going to have new people? Hopefully we'll definitely have Charlie back. I mean, in the in the little they used her, I thought she did ex extremely well. And then with La La La, of course, we'll be able to film with Jax and Brittany. She's buddies with them, wants to get them back on. Now, DJ James Kennedy and Allie. Will we see another one of their friend groups? Like I said, uh, at some episode in the past week, DJ James Kennedy, we've never got to see his friends. We've gotten to see his family, but his friends usually are, you know, we've, we've really not got to see a lot of them. Remember when he lived with that like 55 year old dude? It seemed like it took care of him. What happened to that guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peter Madrigal, of course, well, Madrigal, or however we say his last name, um, he'll always be there. Lisa, Ken, um, I'm trying to think who else, like who else could be in? It's going to all hinge on is Raquel going to be in the cast or not? And if she isn't, how does Tom fit into this? Does he just show up of like, huh, sorry, that was crazy last season, huh? That's so crazy. I don't even know what I would think. And anyways, are you guys ready to rock? Like all of those people were going to his shows, the cast members, none of them are going anymore. Um, these are just the questions that I stay up late and <laughs> late in the evening thinking about i mean it, it truly it's truly keeping me up at night oh my god also ariana maddox is in new york with her new boo um daniel Wu. they were at a new york yankees game the other day it looked like they were having a good time uh but then there's a page six article that ariana and daniel were talking shit about raquel levis on date night I don't know. This is page six. Somebody overheard them talking shit as they looked lovey dovey. I don't know. That doesn't really seem a lot like Ariana to me or the Ariana that I know, but who knows? And also I think Daniel's a little, little bit out of the loop in terms of paying attention to this stuff. So I think, um, I think, that's probably why he's a safe spot in some ways to Ariana is because, He's not a part of this, but would we see Daniel potentially go on Vanderpump Rules? No, I have heard no, I have heard no, but you never, never know. Maybe he's one of those people that comes in for an episode. Uh, I'm just trying to go through every angle that we can think of. Um, but we are, they are really, you know, close to making a lot of casting decisions. Oh, man, this is dark stuff. Okay. So that's the, I mean, listen, at this point, I think Howie Mandel wants to be on this next season. I might pop up on this next season. I mean, really? Oh, we have Jared Lipscomb who's been on this show. I know he's a real, like he's been around there. Um, there are so many people that are around the scene that we really haven't seen and heard from. Um, also, uh, Ariana's friend, Simon Curtis, who is a writer and I believe a musician. Uh, he was there when all of this broke. He could be on the show. I mean, there's a lot of different variations of Vanderpump Rules, and that's why I think we need a behind-the-scenes documentary of the production of what are the conversations when they're in an interview with the production, what is production asking them. I mean, there's a lot happening right now, and I'm so curious. Also, uh, to let you know, DJ James Kennedy said him and Ali are not engaged, or Ali said that the other night when they went live, so I'm hoping, guessing that that is true then. But we also, there was a rumor out today that uh, DJ James Kennedy bought a $1.2 million dollar house and a lot of you are going oh my god it must be a mansion but no it looks like a really dinky house because in los angeles they are forcing like where you could not own a home anymore so i mean i would kill for this house that he has it looks like small cute there looks there's a pool in the backyard it looks nice to me people were making fun of it but i was like hell yeah i would i would kill for a house like that are you kidding me um also uh fallen uh, pour one out for a pump restaurant pump is officially closing uh, after so, so long and, 
it's been 10 years that Pump Restaurant has been open. But don't worry, you guys. Remember, the Pump Restaurant is one thing, but Tom Tom is still open and Sir is still open. Even though Pump, I really actually like Pump. Really strong drinks, really strong hangovers from Pump. And then there's something about her is going to be oh, open wait. as well. Um, but it's kind of an end of an era in a lot of ways with that. I mean, Pump is one of the big the big restaurants for Lisa, even though she has her Vegas restaurants as well now. Um, so this is the statement. The Pump family tells TMZ, it's with heavy hearts that we announce the lease at Pump Restaurant is expiring and will be closing its doors on July 5th after 10 years of beautiful evenings under our olive trees. Were those really olive trees? I thought those were fake. Anyways, July 5th, they're going to make those poor employees work on July 4th and then fire them on July 5th. Uh, it says, while the flagship location at the corner of Santa Monica and Robertson in the heart of WeHo is closing, we're told Lisa is opening two more restaurants at Caesars in Las Vegas. Do we need two more? <laughs> what? It appears a dramatic increase in rent is to blame. The Pump family tells us, while we have loved our time operating Pump to take on another 10-year lease with a huge increase in rent by the landlords is not something we're ready to commit to. After successfully running 37-plus establishments for many years, this type of rent is untenable. Sources close to the family tells TMZ Lisa and her husband, Ken Todd, refused to commit to paying nearly $1 million in yearly rent, with the couple considering the figure to be ridiculous. And I, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, that is completely ridiculous. That's a lot of money. And then I would have just gone about my day. But then, of course, there was a second article. This is from ET Online where uh, Lisa Vanderpump claimed Pump was closing due to high rent. The landlord, quote, says, we did not raise the rent, and in fact, they have been in default under their lease for some time. We also forgave some rent during COVID. Boom. So Lisa gets caught in a little bit of a lie there. Because my thing, that excuse was like, oh, yeah, a million, you know, an extra a million dollars a year. Um, it, that's a really steep increase. Why would you do that as a business owner? And, you know, you have all these other establishments. And then that landlord goes, well, she's not even paying her rent to begin with right now. And we excused a lot of the rent when Lisa wasn't even really taking care of her employees at the time. I would be very curious to see if she took out any PP, uh, the, the PP, the PPP loan. The PPP, PPP, the PPP loans. Um, so, uh, hmm, you, you, Lisa, come on. You don't want to get caught in a scandal ball yourself. That, that, that would not be good. Uh, listen, we're going to call it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm tired. I, I still though, I want to talk about how, uh, okay. Yeah, no, I don't. Cause I wanted to talk about the Howie Mandel. He went on Nick Vile's podcast and, um, uh, Amy Field, who has been on the show and we're friends with, um, she took some notes for me about, about all of this. Well, first off, Jax, uh, Jax and Brittany have that pod, pod when reality hits and they talk about uh, Randall Emmett. Randall is uh, actually going by a different last name, Jax says, and still owes Jax Taylor $75,000 in money. And Jax hired a lawyer to try to get that money back. And they still haven't got that money back, which is just so dark when you think about, man, like that Randall really does not seem like a very good guy at all it is just it, it's crazy um so this is the howie mandel interview amy field took a couple notes for me in regards to the nick vile thing howie is still defending this not great interview but i will say that like maritza who works for this show she said you know listen it what you know howie it got the best uh, it got so many downloads, it, you know, on YouTube, it did huge, one of his biggest episodes. And she's right. I just keep going of like, I want people to like my podcast because they get something out of it. They get information or they think I did a good interview, not just that I like felt something out and I stayed away from questions. Um, but I, I just think when you get an opportunity like that, you know, I was trying to, I was, I wanted to explain to you guys just how things work in terms of podcasting and getting guests. So for like big guests, Howie Mandel 
is not the place that you usually think to go. Like he'll get good guests. He's Howie Mandel. He's made his whole, you know, he's made a living in entertainment for so long, very successfully makes millions of dollars a year doing like judging on AGT stand up. He's a decent actor, but some, you know, I think it's like Stern almost when he was like a judge with Stern, I think made how he like think, Oh, maybe I could do a kind of a talk show thing myself. And I think some people are made for it and some people aren't. He seems like a really good guy. I just don't think necessarily he's the guy for this. And I think this kind of showed highlighted exactly why he's not the guy for this but now he's going on this weird tour trying to tell people why his interview was actually okay it's like a really weird thing instead of moving on he's trying to argue the facts of like well here's the deal but but and i'm like no dude take the l learn from this if anything but we find out a little bit more details in that there was actually an agreement to like let Tom speak completely and not challenge him on anything, which is huge. So anyways, what I was saying is that when you are a big celebrity or even a big reality star or something like that, you want to go to the biggest show out there. And usually, for, I guess for women, it's like Call Her Daddy. Call Her Daddy had Gwyneth Paltrow on this week, I believe. Um, so that's a huge one. And it's not because it's the best. She's the best interview, the best of the best of the best. A lot of that is also in the deals that they made. You know, Ale you know uh, Alexander Cooper, I think her name is, she made, you know, over the pandemic, I even followed this a little bit. Call Her Daddy used to be her and Sophia Franklin, who has her own show. And I hear she's great. I hear Sophia's great. Um, you know, there was a huge... Uh, dismantling of their operation through Barstool and the two girls had a falling out. Alexander like smartly kind of like then took it on, you know, decided to do it by herself and then eventually got out of that contract and went to Spotify. Spotify completely overpaid for her podcast. I mean, we're talking tens of millions of dollars overpaid when they did not need to, nor did they have the statistics on podcasting, not just hers, but podcasting in general to give the deals they were giving. They even did with Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan being the number one male podcaster in so many ways. So you think that's a really viable uh, investment, but it really isn't because they didn't know what they were buying necessarily. Spotify was just trying to get in the podcasting business and the podcasting business still has not been completely uh, like explained to anyone. I read so many articles on this. It's the wild, wild west still. So with uh, Caller Daddy, you know, Spotify owns that. It's not on Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify. So Spotify has the biggest vested interest to make sure that she gets the biggest guests ever, all the time. So she is the first stop for so many people because Spotify is going to make damn well sure that they are because they're going to get their money back. They're going to try to get that investment back. It doesn't even matter how good or not she is. Spotify is going to make sure that they put the right people there. All they need is like five pull quotes. All they need is a clip that they can push out again and again and again and again each week. That's all they need, you know? And, and I'm not even really bagging or talking about her talent because it's really not about that. This is a business. So people go that way. Now the, well, let's use Vanderpump rules, for example. Okay. So Ariana hasn't done anything, but you would want Ariana with one of those big ones. You'd want her with a Joe Rogan or a collar daddy. Right. But then there's like the next step down, a slight step down is that you have like somebody like Nick file, the, the vile files, which has really grown and grown and grown. Uh, he got that show. He started that show, I think himself and uh, you know, obviously a reality star himself. So he has a unique perspective. Um, and uh, he, from what people tell me is a decent interviewer, but it's really, it gets good downloads. So people will go to him. So he got like the Katie Maloney, the Lala, all of those kind of people. He probably wouldn't be able to get an Ariana. I think he'll be able to get Tom Sandoval eventually, but he is that kind of person that you go to. So then how he goes to him, you know, he is the thing. Like, so for a show like mine, I think I would kill in some of these interviews, but I won't get them. I'm not at that place yet. So I'll get these people, but I'll get them after all of the heat dies down. Like I'll hopefully be able to speak to Katie. I know there's like kind of a, they put a kibosh on Vanderpump Rules castmates talking to podcasters right now until after the reunion. But hopefully I'll get Katie after that. I don't care. I don't care if I talk to her when everything's exploding or afterwards. I'm just genuinely curious to talk to her. But my theory is if like this can keep growing, I can keep doing good interviews. If you can throw me anybody 
I'll talk to them and I'll try to make it good and I'll try to do my research and I'll try, you know, I really will. Like even had summer, summer house, Martha's vineyard. I only got to see one episode. I did my research on the people. I was able to do a, an interview today that was fun. I think a little informative and I think it sells the show and hopefully you do enough of those you get enough like at bats under your belt and you get better and better and better. And the show grows, you get better as an interviewer. And hopefully by the time I can ever get to a place like Nick Vile or even underneath that a little bit, I'm really ready for that moment when opportunity, you know, opportunity happens and I get the right interview at the right time. And this can explode even further. I know this is probably a little too inside baseball and it's probably boring. So turn it off if you don't want to hear this. But Nick's at that moment where it's a great inflection point for him, where if he gets those right interviews, he can keep increasing not only his downloads, but his, I know he has a book to, to push out as well. Um, it's, it's really exciting, but it's never going to be able to compete with Caller Daddy. He's not yet at that moment where they're throwing him a $60 million deal. Um, but he's doing really good. He's, you know, he's really good. But Howie Mandel, really good, you know, brand recognition. But when you get that opportunity that he got with Tom Sandoval, the sad thing is he didn't really bother to look into it. He said, oh, friend of somebody that works for me. Okay. And his daughter is a huge fan. And his daughter was like, whoa. And he told his daughter that like, I guess the daughter stayed up all night taking notes and questions and, you know, how he told her, sorry, you can't do any of that. You can't, you can't push back at all. And it's like, dude, what I'm saying is that like, if you really want to explode, like, yeah, that's a lot of downloads, all that stuff. Everything's great. But you want to think about the overall health of down the line. And now in a lot of people's minds, not everybody, but a lot of people's minds, he's kind of a joke in terms of that. And now he's kind of doing this weird tour where he goes and kind of makes fun of Bravo fans. And then he's starting to like, yeah, no, Lala's cool. No, I really like Lala. She can't do the podcast because of Bravo. But I think we're going to go down the line. Now he's all of a sudden like, I think these people are great. I like to work with them. Got good downloads. And it's like, dude. You made you continually make fun of the audience, but now you want a little piece of this shine. But you just showed us as an interviewer, you're willing to be bought. Not that he got paid for it, but you know what I'm saying. He, he you're willing to be like, and and I and I want to be honest with you. There's always things that you know I'll have to cut uh, afterwards, or there's little topics that I can't like near. Like even with um, Taylor Hale that was on this week, who I love from Big Brother, they told me going in don't ask about her breakup. And I was like, okay, okay. But we hit it off enough where she started talking about her breakup. She started talking about it a little bit and that left me the door open and then I didn't have to cut it, but it was also positive. But of course I was going to respect that wish, but I also wasn't like, I've not been in this situation. So here's some of the notes. Sandoval was a last minute ad. They weren't expecting it. His daughter wanted to do it. This is about the notes. How he made them, how he made her throw out the questions because he agreed to go easy on Sandoval. Uh, the daughter was wearing a send it to Daryl sweatshirt that day. Sandoval came in for the interview. How he made her take it off. How he loves Lala now, thinks she's funny, charming, and a star. He enjoyed her commentary on the Sandoval interview, invited Lala to come on his pod when she's allowed to by Bravo. How he still doesn't understand why it's such a big deal, thinks the Randall stuff is a way bigger deal and more interesting. I do think that. The day the interview dropped, Howard, how he went to film America's Got Talent and was getting yelled at and booed in the audience because of this interview. How he gave Nick shit about not setting a wedding date with his fiance. Um, but anyways, I guess Nick Vile pushed back on Howie and his interview with Tech. Uh, style. And, and by the way, that's what I would have wanted myself to do as well of like, yeah, we don't want to talk to Howie Mandel. Like I, you know, I'm ecstatic about your career, but you're here because of this interview. So let's talk about what worked and what didn't work. I mean, really that's what it's all about. But the thing with Howie, it, it's very, it's very similar to Sandoval for me of like, they just don't understand. They can't relent and understand what they did wrong in that moment. And I really think it's just overall health of the show. Like, yeah, good numbers for that one, but you're not potentially going to have that opportunity again. You'll get the Lala interview because Lala thinks you're, you know, somebody that's on a network television show and she's smart. She wants to, you know, it's all of these building blocks of, of trying to get your products, your voice, all of that stuff out. Of course, it's like building blocks, but I just thought what a missed opportunity in that moment. And of course, in the end, we got so much fodder out of it 
but it still wasn't the interview. It made him look bad as an interviewer. And in my opinion, it made Sandoval look worse. So agreeing to go easy on him in the long run didn't do Sandoval any favors and it didn't do Howie any favors. And I just think that is something that, that should be pointed out. But I love the overall machinations of podcasting. I think it's such a fascinating thing. And you know, you, the audience, me doing this, we're, we're kind of still on the ground floor of what this potentially could be. Even though we're over a decade into this, I mean, it's still the sky's the limit. They still haven't really figured out, but everybody has the opportunity to have a voice here. And I'm talking to you guys at home. It's the coolest thing when I will talk to certain listeners that have like, I hated you so much. I started my own pocket. No, they'll be like, oh, you know, I, I started this because of you. Like, no shit. I've gotten a couple of those. And it's like the coolest thing ever. So just out there listening right now, even if you're screaming of like, I have totally different opinions than you. Amazing. Start a podcast. Really do it. Honestly, I will, I will be a guest on your podcast when you do, because I think this is such a cool thing. So we're going to end it right there. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend. I am fading, man. I've lost all of my energy. So I hope you got some stuff out of this. I like these mishmash ones. It's like Vanderpump Rules after dark, where it's very loose. And I'm just like talking with you guys. I'll talk to you guys bright and early on Monday for the Pop Culture Roundup, the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash so bad it's good. I'm sure I will do a Patreon over the weekend. And uh, that's it, man. I'm, I know I left out so much, but that is it. Have a great flipping weekend. I love you. Bye.